Hello and welcome to this video demonstrating how to deploy large-scale print environments in minutes thanks to ThinPrint Management Centre. In today's demonstration I'm going to deploy print queues for two different branch offices onto two central print servers at the same time. So uh, this is ideal if you're configuring a cluster of central print servers that might be using for example the ThinPrint High Availability Service. Uh, now there's a few uh, features and benefits to this. Uh, of course the administrators will get an overview of their entire print environment. Um, also uh, using ThinPrint Engine um, which is uh, required in this uh, situation. Um, ThinPrint Engine compresses print, tra print jobs, uh, print traffic up to 97% so that allows for fast seamless printing from cloud environments back to a remote site. Also, you'll notice that uh, driver management is very straightforward. You only need uh, to manage the drivers on the management center server itself. Um, and ThinPrint can be configured in a way that you limit the number of drivers uh, throughout your network. Um, so they're only installed on the central print servers and this management center server, they're not installed on terminal servers, on branch servers or users workstations so you'll find that's uh, going to save the administrator a lot of time um, and also sharing of print queues and other administrative tasks are also very uh, straightforward uh, thanks to management center. So um, in today's demonstration I've got two branch print servers one in Sydney and one in Melbourne um, and uh, all I'm going to do is create some print queues. They're going to, uh, I've got them on a local, uh, in an LPT port. Um, what you would create them on would be uh, if they're a network printer uh, on the LAN, you would uh, create them on a TCP port uh, pointing to the IP address of, um, of the printer on the LAN. Um, or this also works for USB printers and other things, but today, um, um, just for the demo, I'm just going to use LPT ports. Generic text only drivers, so like I said, you don't need to install drivers on the branch servers. Um, this really functions similar to a ThinPrint hub. The ThinPrint hub is probably better because it's a solid state device and you don't need to pay for a Windows license and you don't need IT know-how at the remote site. Uh, but there are some circumstances where uh, it can't really be avoided, especially if you've got like an admin server or a maintenance server there at the remote site, and that's where this ThinPrint client would come in handy. But the functions of using Management Center um, are the same, uh, whether you're printing to a ThinPrint hub or you're printing to a branch server. So like I said, I'm going to use the generic text only driver. I'll give my print queue a name, MLB. FX. I don't want to share it and I'll do the same thing here with um, a HP printer. There you go. Wonderful, that's all that's required there and if we looked at the ThinPrint client service that's installed on this branch server you'll see the ThinPrint client's already picked up these print queues and assigned them with an ID. The ThinPrint client is responsible for receiving a compressed print job, decompressing it, and then forwarding it on to the printer over the LAN or via USB or however you've got it configured. So I'll move on to my Sydney printers now as well. Um, similar thing I'm going to do here, adding a printer. Sharing text only, this will be Sid FX. Oops. I like caps lock, it's a bit neater. And I had my HP one as well. There we go. That's all that's required on the branch service configuration. Moving on to management center which is where where the rest of the configuration takes place. Um, so management center is used for deploying print queues onto the central print servers but 
Uh, first of all, management centre needs to know a bit about these print queues which are going to be deployed. Uh, and we're going to start off with loading some drivers here into a central driver store. Um, so if I just go here, set path to my driver pool, I've got a shared network location which contains all my printer drivers. All right. And so now if I went to add a driver, you'll see it's, it's picked it up. The first one I'll add is my Fuji Xerox printer driver. Excellent. And then I will add a HP printer driver as well. Excellent. And it also comes with a ThinPrint Apple gateway as well, which is ThinPrint's universal driver and has some other compression features. Um, in today's demonstration, we'll be hiding this, um, these native drivers from, um, from users and from other servers. So the only uh, driver which will be shared out will be the ThinPrint Apple gateway. So uh, that also limits the number of drivers on, uh, on Citrix servers, terminal servers and users workstations. Um, I know that uh, driver conflicts are a major bugbear of Citrix admins. Um, so we should find that very helpful in saving a lot of time. Um, because uh, I want to perhaps make some changes like setting black and white uh, printing and custom finishing options. We need to create templates as well. Um, and that's just a matter of just clicking this button here to create some templates here. And these will be installing some new print queues on here. Um, you can see them being created here. So these are some print queues which I can edit later on and specify black and white printing and, and other things like that. So that's hopefully not too far away. There we are. So we see my, my HP uh, drivers there as well, HP template. So basically when I'm creating print queues onto central print servers, it's going to look at these templates that I've got here on this management center. And I'll see what settings I've predefined and it will push out those settings onto the central print servers, which is very intuitive. Um, now, to configure how the print queues are going to be mapped. So first of all, um, I'm going to create my locations. So I've got Melbourne, whoops, let's get rid of the caps lock now. And Sydney. All right, and then I'll also specify my Branch print servers. Oops, dot 105. Create that. And I'll do the same for Sydney as well. Dot 106. Right. Okay, and now when I go up here and click Get Configuration, it will query those uh, branch servers. And you can see it's got my print queues and it knows a bit more information about them as well. So that's good. So the communication between the management center and the branch offices is working well, that it's getting this print information. Um, now to um, specify my central print servers. Three, that's that. Great, so I've got my two central print servers. Now, because I want to configure both of them at the same time, um, we have this option here to create print server groups. 
and now I will create a group. I'm just going to call it HA because these printers will be part of my high availability cluster. Excellent. Okay, and finally, I just need to specify um, I need to create a connection between the branch servers and the central print servers, and this is where I can configure a whole bunch of other custom options. So, first of all, I have my Melbourne, I'll call it MLB, and I've got the option here to select my HA group. I've got the option here to select which branch office I'm doing, and now I've got so various options which I can uh, specify uh, if the site has got a limited bandwidth. We've got some customers who only have a two meg bandwidth printing out to outback locations in Australia. Um, they find this feature very handy, um, but we don't need it in this situation. But I am going to uh, use the Windows printer pooling, uh, printer port pooling feature. So if there is a hanging print job, uh, in one locate on one uh, printer, users will still be able to print to that printer while the other ones while the while the slow job is spooling. I'm going to enable VLayer um, because of what I mentioned earlier that we're going to share out the thin print output gateway uh, version, uh, the thin print output gateway driver, and we're going to hide the native driver. And that's what this box is here that I'm unticking. I don't want to share the native driver with users. And also, I don't really want to publish them in AD at this stage, but you're welcome to do that if you want. Um, other options there, if, for example, the um, the branch server is outside the, um, the, the WAN, you can target it behind a masked firewall, but I don't need to do that in this situation. So that's my Melbourne uh, printer connection, and then I'll do the same for Sydney. HA, Sydney, and thankfully it's remembered my other, uh, my previous settings there, which is good. Now all that's needed is to click, uh, is to specify the printers, which I want to map, and also the drivers that they'll be using. So when I click edit printers here, you can see it's already uh, married up the print queues available on the branch server for this location. I can now select my driver that I want to use. Um, and if I had different different templates, say I had a black and white um, printing template or and color printing template, I'd be allowed to configure that here. Um, and I'll do the same for HP as well. All right, and I'll do the same for my Sydney connection. So Fuji Xerox HP. Oops, misclicked there. Excellent. Select all and OK. And then I can review my changes if if I need to. Um, because yes, because I thought I'd I did that. I made a mistake in um, on my Melbourne um, my Melbourne print queue. So Melbourne, I'm using a HP driver here. There we go. All right, that's good. Good, I reviewed. Good, always good to double check. All right, and so all that's needed now is to push out these print queues onto the central print servers. So it's going to configure both of them at the same time. It will send the driver packages across and um, and then install these print queues. And we'll be able to watch it here in the print management snap-in. You can see it's already creating them here. Um, so it's creating them on my two central print servers, CPS2, CPS3. Now, why there is, and here's the HP printers coming through as well, so you can see that's very quick. Um, why it's creating multiple versions of print queues, um, you can see, oops, yep, 
Uh, I think it's best if I actually narrow down on one of the servers here. And you'll be able to see, um, because me I mentioned, oh, we're almost ready. <laughs> so it's sharing Melbourne print queues and Sydney print queues across to both central print servers. And I mentioned that I only want to share the thin print apple gateway um, driver out across to other servers and I don't want to share the native driver because I don't want to keep updating these drivers on every single server in my network. And so you'll be able to see here in, uh, if I click on manage sharing, you can see um, that the thin print apple gateway uh, version is shared but the native driver is not shared. Um, and so users will now already be able to manually search for these printers, but you can combine it with other things like thin print engine on terminal servers to dynamically map them into users' sessions based on their subnet that they're connecting from, all sorts of other things, the world is your oyster. But uh, if we go back to all printers, just to review, all the print queues that I've created today, these are all of them. Um, I don't know how long this video has gone for, maybe about 10 minutes. Um, we've created a whole bunch of print queues on multiple servers using multiple drivers and with a varying array of sharing options, uh, along with some printer templates as well, which we can modify in future. And uh, hopefully you can see that uh, Thin Print Management Center is a very powerful tool um, which can also be used for even more exciting tasks like print server migrations and, and anything else where you need to quickly create a whole bunch of print queues. So thanks for your time.